Welcome to Hidden Treasures, where we tell stories of lost treasures, lost gold, lost mines, and any stories that I find interesting and hopefully you do too. Today we're discussing lost gold in Goldfield, Nevada. In 1904, a major gold discovery brought a boom to the very small town of Goldfield, Nevada. In just a short time, Goldfield grew to a population of 30,000, which made it the largest town in Nevada. Interesting fact, Goldfield at this time actually had the longest bar in America. It had 80 bartenders lined up shoulder to shoulder to help all of the patrons that were there, all of the miners that were there that would come after their shift to get a drink. This bar was actually owned by a man named Tex Rickard, who was a boxing promoter that actually built Madison Square Garden in New York. So at this time, this small town of Goldfield, Nevada was booming. With all of the miners that were there and the crazy stuff that was going on, there were plenty of treasures, there were plenty of buried treasures, plenty of stories wrapped around this small town. Here are two of those stories that I found to be extremely interesting. Harry Bishop was a well-known, well-respected, well-educated man that lived in Goldfield, Nevada. Bishop was a geologist. He would go into the mines, he would take samples, he would look at the rocks, he would know where the best places, the most likely course of action to get the most gold was, and he would direct everyone where to mine. One tragic day, there was actually a cave-in in the section of mine that Bishop was in, and it trapped him, trapping his legs while he was in the mine. In order to get Bishop out and save his life, they actually had to amputate one of his legs. Because he no longer had this leg, he was no longer able to go in and explore the mine, so he could no longer perform his job. He was then relegated to a smelting job, which paid much less than what his previous job did, and he was very unhappy about it. He believed that the owners of the mine didn't provide safe enough working conditions, and that they were at fault for the cave-in, which resulted in him losing his leg and also losing his job. Bishop actually found an ingenious way to get back at the mine owners by hitting them where it hurt most, their wallets. As a smelter, he had access to all of the gold that was mined. When the miners brought him gold at the end of the day and he was to melt it down, he would actually steal some and he started smuggling small amounts of gold every day out of the place. He actually replaced the amputated leg with a prosthetic wooden leg that had a hollow portion and he would place this smuggled gold into the hollow portion of his leg walk right out without anybody knowing the difference. And he got away with this for a while, but eventually the owners of the mine noticed the losses and they came looking and they figured out that he was the one that was taking it. There was an investigation and the authorities actually went to Bishop's house. They went to his basement and they found a chamber behind a wall that he had built that had a cavity where he had stashed this gold. He had about 90 gold ingots that was worth about $50,000. However, the company had claimed that they had lost $100,000. So what happened to the other 50,000? I think that there are a few possibilities that we can discuss. Most treasure hunters prefer to believe is that Bishop actually stole $100,000 worth of gold, hid $50,000 at his house, and another $50,000 somewhere else that is yet unknown. Another possibility is that there was someone else, someone completely independent or a few people that were completely independent that were also smuggling gold and that Bishop is just the one that got caught. Or this other person could have been working with Bishop, they both could have been smuggling the gold and they split the money 50-50. That's why there was 50,000 at Bishop's house and there could be 50,000 somewhere else. Another possibility is that only 50,000 was lost, but the company claimed that 100,000 was lost for insurance fraud. Though it may never be known where this other $50,000 worth of gold is, a lot of people like to believe that it's out there somewhere, that Bishop actually hid it somewhere, and that there's $50,000 worth of gold buried somewhere around Goldfield. On September 3rd, 1913, a flash flood swept through the town of Goldfield, Nevada. Goldfield is set in a basin in the Malapai mountain range. On both the east side and the west side, there are gullies that carry this water. 
As the rain poured down, these gullies gained all of this water and streams turned into raging rivers that swept away houses, swept away roadways, and damaged some railroad tracks. This was a huge flood that no one in the area had seen at the time, they weren't ready for it, and it actually ended up taking five lives. With these five lives and all of these houses, it actually swept away two safes filled with about a hundred gold coins. As these raging waters swept away these houses and these safes, they also swept away a lot of the land, so it was more of a landslide, and it was just mud and guck and all of this timber and all of these houses moving through, sweeping away everything. Where these safes were and how this mud was flowing through, these safes ended up on the west side of town. Though the direction that these safes were swept in is known, it was a huge area that was flooded. Though the general flow of the direction of the mud from where these safes were swept is known and it's to the west, the actual spot of where these safes ended up is completely unknown. It's buried under that mud and no one has ever found these safes. So these two safes are still out there with a hundred gold coins buried in this mud west of the town. No one knows where it is and no one has ever found them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stories. If so, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.